Hey, Blue Table fans. I'm here with Nate. How's it going? From Texas. What part of Texas are you from? San Antonio. And Nate is from San Antonio, Texas. See? I do listen. Shut up. So, um, any, anybody, anybody appreciate a good irony out there? All right. So anyway, um, and he's making what's called a pilgrimage, which is where he travels to Blue Table Painting to go see the holy sites. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, um, so we went to the Badger Hole. We did, we did. Right? And uh, how was that? It was great. You guys got a lot more space here. It's pretty awesome to see where you, you know, started out, though. Right? It is. Very neat. Right. Yeah. So, uh, it's like you go back and it's an office. It's a basement office. Right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. It was a simpler time. So uh, we go to the Badger Hole, and uh, then we go to eat some crappy gas station food. Oh, it was great. It was and then great to sushi. any of the number no, gas station sushi, we went somewhere different for the sushi, by the way. No. <laughs> gas station sushi, can you imagine? Oh, by the way, I'm vomiting looking over here, John. Yeah. Vomiting already. Yeah, pre-vomiting pre on the gas station sushi, <laughs> right? Okay, so anyway, John's getting ready for the mini wargaming thing. So what do you have to say, Nate? Uh, you guys should come out and check out BTP Studio. It is amazing. People here are awesome. And uh, just take in the sights. It's incredible. Incredible. That's right. So, yeah, Nate's been following us for like five years. So, all right. Let's go see what everyone else is doing. Oh, my gosh. Yikes. <laughs> Rin. Hey, Rin. Hey, Rin. Hey, Rin. Hey, Rin. Hey, Rin. What are you and me doing this Friday? Painting. Bam! Paint Fest Thanks. with Joseph. What up? Hey, Broadcast you live. Is your bat wrap? Your guys' bat no, wrap there? No, it's still no. sitting it's up still there. there. Still sitting there. We're yeah. Do We're going to do, do it. It's Ren's fault. Do you know how hard it is? He don't, sleeps hey, in. Hey, don't, he's take got, don't take this blame. Don't take this blame. What are you he's doing? not taking what are you blame. Doing? He's just You're being truth, truthful. You're not allowed to take the blame. In, it's, it's, it's take the blame? It's, it's he's just telling the truth. Oh my gosh. It is at least 80% Ren's fault. <laughs> I mean, the only way it could be less his fault is, I guess, if I had called him to wake him up. Oh no, even that didn't work, because Rin didn't even charge his phone up. Hey, that is my phone's fault. <laughs> the, the, nice. charger port, the charger port has a short. Yeah. So, like, Show me box. I'll plug it in. I had to make a box. Yeah, they, to charge you had to make thing. this little ghetto box to even charge his phone up. Oh my it's god. Hilarious. In the meantime, let's look at this high elf sky cutter. This is awesome. And this is this is for daddy. I think this, this, is this is what I do. Okay, so I have to strap my phone in here like this. Uh, yeah, like this. I can see. And then it's plugged in. Okay. Because it only charges. What's the brand of phone this, here? Like, it's a Galaxy Note. First okay. One. At this particular <laughs> angle. <laughs> yeah, at this very specific <laughs> angle right here, and like half the time it doesn't even work. Like, when I'm sleeping, it just like, oh, I'm not gonna work anymore. <laughs> nice. It's a nightmare. All right, let's look at this Sky, El this sky Elf High Cutter, is what I'm calling it, apparently. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice. Hey, we got a parakeet. Did you? Yeah, can I tell you the story about the parakeet? Oh, please. Because you'll do. love it. Okay, so my daughter Willow is being so cute and so uh, darling about wanting a parakeet and I'm all for it so I put her off for a while so finally we go to the pet shop and we get a parakeet, a cage and some bird seed, right? Yeah. And while we're there, um, the, uh, the other parakeets are, when you take them out and they get away from you, they're flying all over the pet store, right? And this is the one right down on the corner here, here yeah. right? Nemo's. Yeah, Nemo's. And so, uh, so, but there's this one, this blue one, who's so cute, he just flutters to the ground kind of helplessly, right? And he doesn't bite, and he's so sweet with Willow, and, uh, or she, I guess, Willow decided it was a she. So uh, we get the cage, the guy says, here's how you clip their wings so they can't fly away. And so we get her home, we, uh, and it's, uh, Willow's like kind of playing with his parakeet in the garage, right? And, you know, just letting it stand on her shoulder and her her hand mm -hmm. and so I'm like hey wouldn't it be great if we took the parakeet out in the backyard to you know let it play around in the grass right wouldn't that be great for this little parakeet so we get out there the parakeet goes Whoosh, and flies away okay. <laughs> it was faking it the whole time 
faking it. Perfectly capable of flight at all times. I didn't clip the wings enough. So we go, we go to a different pet shop. Why? You find another, another pet shop? <laughs> that's right, we go to a different pet shop. Well, because all the other parakeets at this one were biting. Oh, and they were biting hard, too. Oh, yeah, that was no good. So we go to this different one and we get a different parakeet. And so Willow actually slept upstairs underneath the parakeet's cage. <laughs> well, it's on like a little stand thing, like a hanging thing. Yeah. Not directly underneath okay, it. Okay. What's wrong with you? Listen, listen, you said underneath it. it. What am I imagining? I'm imagining the parakeet pooping on the top. <laughs> That's awesome. We change out the... the, the the newspaper I'm and kind of put her. I'm glad because I was playing yeah. another dead pet story where like a cat. Like, yeah, a cat, cat, cat runs out. <laughs> Actually, that that's a little better. Yeah. Willow was devastated. She's like, ah, ah, what happened? She couldn't wrap her head around how the thing that she had, you know, that had, she had held out for four days for it, you know, and that's a long time for a kid that age. All right. Anyway, let's look at some models, people. And no, Roberto isn't a model. Uh, Let's see your modeling face. He told me he now, was. Now I'm smiling. Give a steel magnum. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't know what that looks like. Yeah, yeah, it's not steel magnum. <laughs> Hold on, let's see you. Let's see you, come on, strike a pose. <laughs> That's a, a troll face with no teeth showing. Hold on, let's see it. <laughs> That's so fantastic. The troll face the best troll is it really? Oh, okay, I'll have to get that one. Let's get that one. All right, so show us your Zerg Queen. Work in progress. Work in pro it still looks like, what did you call it? Uh, Zerg Queen. Uh, lumpy Potato. <laughs> lumpy Potato. This is the Lumpy Potato yeah. stage of sculpting. It's like drawing, you know, you add a bit, add details, erase, add yeah. details, erase. Yeah. So, I'm well, trying to go. make sure That's it's... a Turvagon in your army, right? It'll be a Turvagon, yep. That's fantastic. All right, and I notice uh, you're working on this. Actually, uh, Zach made that. I'm going to be doing some modifications. So it's a Star too. Wars like destroyer, right? Yeah, Supposedly. Star Destroyer. Shaped, oh, and it goes with the uh, whatever it is, the Tie Fighter thing. Out of plastic or nothing else. Hey, has anybody seen the manliest miniature that Mason made? The flamethrower guy. Floating around. Who's got it? It's not up on my desk anymore. Oh, Karen has it. That's right. You were gonna paint it. Is it done yet? All right. Well, get cracking on that, Karen. Come on. I don't care that you don't feel well. <laughs> That's awesome. Prone to sudden bursts of uncompassionateness. So, All right. Oh, let's news, do this thing. I Callousness. Up, That's uh, what it's called. From our web store, I picked up yeah. the Malifaux box <gasps> set for the Outcast awesome. with Leviticus. And how much was that? I think it was sixty. So okay. Fantastic. So, but it came with this other stuff. I got. Oh, okay, great. So, so you got like a lot. I got a lot. I mean, some okay, of the okay. cards were already laminated. So you got an awesome deal on the BTP web so, store. Say yes. Uh, yes. Awesome. <laughs> Cheaper than Thanks. retail. A little cue card goes up. Yes. So All it right. came with three extra miniatures. This uh, okay, behemoth good. thing. I think he ru runs like 15 by himself. Okay. Great. So. All right. Thanks a lot, Roberto. <laughs> She's gonna keep painting. So, uh, mystery girl, mm -hmm. tell us, uh, uh, tell us a news story. A news story. Yeah. I'm painting these miniatures right now. The <laughs> end. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna keep recording until you come up with something. Go ahead. That's so mean. <laughs> I'm camera shy, man. <laughs> That's awesome. She's dreading the day. Oh, yeah, these are the level eight figures. Yeah. Okay, guys, what's going on over in Megapod? Isle of Blood, Skaven. Okay, awesome. And, um, well, Ben's painting some heads. What's the name of that? Uh... Yeah, we like to show these. Yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to go see. So what are they again? So, let's see. Let's see. Oh yeah, this is a company that um, will take a picture of you right, 3D and three D print out your face on a miniature. We right. should give them a heads right. up. Uh but dumb chow. <laughs> no, it's it's pretty neat. I've never seen three D miniatures before okay. the three D printing, but it's pretty slick. Yeah, so this is like a cartoonist guy. You know, it's not really focusing on it. Sorry guys. Yeah, we got um we got There's like a famous author. This one here is actually of uh, Brandon Sanderson. Okay. 
Is that, is that a famous author? He is. Huh? I'm sure there's many people out there who will know who he is. All right, I don't know if you guys can see this, but... He wrote the Mistborn book. So, the Wheel of Time, the Mistborn book, what else did he write? Okay, great. I don't know. I haven't read his books either, but I guess he's kind of a big deal. All right, awesome. <laughs> I'm kind of a big deal. Uh, this pod, we've got a lot of demons going on, so let's uh, go in. Mind you, this is all work in progress. And, uh, yeah. Guy, these models are awesome. Good job, GW, that's all I have to say. Putting out a good product and reaping the rewards. Good for you. It's a shame they're literally a pain to paint. Yeah, they, they, do, they, do they draw blood on occasion? <laughs> Ooh. Dave, have you ever drawn blood on a model before? I have. Yeah. Something yep. Middle, uh, I was doing uh, a lot of Flames of War and uh, some like historical models or whatever. Yeah. I was playing together a war band and uh, these Vikings. And it was pretty bad. I was painting some blood letters way back when, and then I had to like do a repair and I cut myself with my X-Acto knife. And I took it as a sign from the blood god, and I anointed all their blades with my own blood. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. Thank Reaver Jet. Awesome. By the way, I don't do that anymore. All right. Reaver Jet bikes. I always cut myself. Reaver Jet bikes. Yeah. Those are sharp. Fins at the back. Right. I've punctured my finger three or four times just handling them. Nice. That's great. All right, let's take a look at these guys. Oh, whoa. Hello. Yeah, those, those whips will catch it. Oh, man. God, I, love, God, I want to play some Warhammer Fantasy so bad. I know these are 40K, but still, that's amazing. Didn't come over and talk to me. Aha! Not, Too uh, late. Sean, what? With that blood story you just told, you probably like accidentally performed yeah, some yeah, ritual yeah. and affected someone else, like in Asia. Or oh something. my god. Probably. That's right. A little bit of blood magic. <laughs> Actually, they probably just had a, a couple of years of good luck because of me. Oh my god. Yep. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's look at this model you're painting, then. Oh, that's awesome. I like that. I like these little guys on here. Those are hilarious. Oh, there's one on the other side too. Yeah. All right, that's great. Okay, anything you want to say? Um, no. All right, awesome. How about you, Dave? What's new in Dave Land? Um, I bought a bunch of stuff from Josh, and I'm doing some conversions. So I'm taking these Dark Angel guys and, and turning them into Chaos, uh, Chaos Sorcerer and a Chaos Sorcerer. So. All right, fantastic. Uh, awesome. Okay, thanks a lot, Dave. Here with Karen and Xana, bam! You didn't make up your mind fast enough. <laughs> so, uh, what 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 project did you just do? I just turned in this uh, yeah, white scar storm eagle. Oh, fantastic! Thing. Oh, wowzers! What the heck? Yeah, that's cool. Oh, I'm gonna get this under the lights for sure. Oh, I love that uh, glass effect. Cockpit window, isn't it cool? Yeah, I'm a huge fan of painted cockpits. Mm. I much prefer. What about you, Xana? Yeah, if you did a 40k army, painted or unpainted? I like the painted, mostly because I really hate painting the guys inside. Ah. <laughs> Is it All really? All their little dashboards and stuff. Right? So. Yeah, but that can be fun too. I, I used All right. the method that Sam taught us in the training thing uh, okay. a couple weeks ago. So, you know, playing around with new stuff. That's great. So you've been, you've both been trained by a golden demon winning painter, right? Yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> So, John, I've heard you make the best troll face. Let's have it. <laughs> awesome. Uh, hey, Matt. Hey, Sean. What you working on? I'm working on a scenic base for okay. the Level 8 Eldar project. Oh, fantastic. So, and uh, it's got little magnets in here? Yep. Oh, I just stuck my finger in there, sorry. That's all right. Yeah, it's, uh, you've got magnets on each one of these because the, uh, the jet bikes are going to have flying bases with uh, little metal plates underneath okay, them. Okay, fantastic. And they're all going to kind of sit in these little spots. If you look at it from this side as well, uh, you can see that there's sort of like some Eldar rune stuff going on. Okay, Which is great. Kinda neat. All right, thanks a lot, Matt. Mm -hmm. All right, last stop. Where was Zach? <laughs> going to Coldstone? Is it some kind of specialty today? No, just a good day. Just a good day to go to Coldstone. So. Is it? Okay. 
I don't know, it felt like, it felt like 90, like, I don't know, 10 degrees cooler than the scorcher we've been having. Well, it feels great down here. It yeah. actually gets kind of cool for me. But then you go outside and it's like super hot, so. Nice awesome. Now people might think I'm zooming in on Christy right now, but I'm actually moving like really close. No, not really. <laughs> so uh, what did you get? I got um, oatmeal cookie batter. Ooh, yum. And That's got, healthy, by the way, because yeah. it has oatmeal in it. Yeah, and I got That's the raspberry you. sorbet. Not mixed, just oh, yeah. separate. Nice. The raspberry was super refreshing. Oh, nice. Okay, what about you, Zachly? I usually get something that's pretty complicated, but I decided to go pretty basic, and I got French vanilla with just cookie dough. Oh, okay. Wow. Awesome. Wow. I got a hankering for Cold Stone <laughs> all of a sudden. We saw that's someone awesome. there come in in a till shirt out of the corner of our house. Oh, okay. Awesome. Oh,